Right. Let's run America like a business. <laughs> yeah. But no colors matters. Everybody, whoever could do the job gets the job. Mm -hmm. Going in to 2020, there was Trump was unbeatable. Uh, the economy was unbelievably strong. America was back as he had promised. There used to be that expression. It's the economy, which basically meant, um, okay, if this person has a strong economy, they are definitely going to be guaranteed a second term. And we just felt the red wave coming. And all of a sudden, a pandemic hits, right? The pandemic hits, and now we have to do something we have never done in the history of the United States during a pandemic. Uh, let's not forget, uh, the Revolutionary War was fought during a pandemic, the smallpox pandemic, and we've never seen our country shut down because of a flu, because of a swine flu. It's just never happened before, and yet they were insisting on going through these extraordinary means um, and creating this illusion of fear. They needed Americans to be fearful because Americans were not fearful going into 2020. Uh, jobs were roaring back. Our economy was back. Uh, things were booming. So what better way to make people fearful than to first and foremost tell them to, to eliminate their social circles, right? Telling Americans, okay, everybody go home now and rely on your screens to tell you what's going on in the world. That gives the media full control and full power. They're saying you can't see your family members, you can't see your friends, you can't gather. They needed to create this unbelievable um, sense of fear, an environment of fear, so that they could control the narrative. Now everyone has to listen uh, to what the mainstream media tells them is going on outside because you're not allowed to go outside. You're not allowed to go to church. Your children aren't allowed to go to school. Parents are terrified. They're, they're, they're saying all these things. You had people that were lying about babies dying. I mean, they terrified and traumatized America. And for the first time ever, we saw a death ticker. I mean, just think about just think about the psychology behind that. Seeing a death ticker every single day telling you how many Americans are allegedly dying, censoring people that are saying that are coming out and saying, um, you know, my dad died of cancer. I don't know why on his uh, death certificate he wrote COVID. They wrote COVID nineteen. Anybody who wrote that and told the truth was immediately censored. They were saying that sharing this information was dangerous, and we all just needed to rely on the CDC and uh, who to tell us exactly, the World Health Organization to tell us exactly what was going on. Um, doctors never talk about a communist country. Uh, doctors were being censored. Doctors that were saying, hey, uh, I have a different perspective about this COVID-19 sub. Yes, it's real, but a little bit of vitamin C, hydroxychloroquine, censored, gone, demonized, uh, taken off of platforms, taken off of YouTube, taken off of Facebook. Again, stuff that we just have never seen in America. And just to go back to that death ticker, imagine, take any anything else, take car accidents. Imagine if every single day on the media, they showed you a death ticker of how many people were getting into car accidents. I was curious, so I looked up how many people die in accidents every year. And this is what kept popped up. This is the first thing that popped up. It said approximately 1.35 million people die in road crashes every year. An average of 3,700 people lose their lives every day on the road. An additional 20 to 50 million suffer from non-fatal injuries, often resulting into long-term disabilities. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I don't think I'm going to drive today. All right, just imagine if they show this every day. As Candace Owens stated, it'll make people rethink driving. All right, let's continue. You would probably never get in your car. It was intentional. It was to traumatize and scare Americans and to give the media the power to report whatever they said to be a fundamental truth. And um, we were not allowed to challenge it. So that was the easiest way for them to first and foremost get Americans scared. And uh, China is just, I mean, everything about China right now is shady. You're telling me a nation of 1.3 billion people were able to knock out the virus, the coronavirus, in two weeks. What was it three weeks maybe two weeks three weeks um and they're back to business they're good they're good they're open for business guys they're good they got this under control china has declared victory over the coronavirus following nine whirlwind months for first responders scientists and party officials after denying the severity of the virus and initially underreporting numbers beijing now says that it can keep the pandemic at bay for normal chinese life and community are slowly edging back to normal. Look at the numbers of infection rates. They're like, mm, 10 people were infected this week. Three people were infected this week. If anybody uh, watching this has been to China, it's just an impossibility. Meanwhile, we're being told you can't breathe. Uh, every If you touch something, it remains on the surface. Oh, the infection rates are just getting higher and higher and higher. We're all going to die. But China was able to figure this out in five seconds, guys. So they took the blame and then just sort of moved on and their economy is back up and everything's good. In fact, the person who got the wealthiest during this uh, spell, if you're looking at uh, people that increased their net worth, 
actually wasn't Jeff Bezos, it was uh, Jack Ma, is that his correct name? Jack Ma in China, look up how much money he's made. It is incredible how much money he has made uh, off of the coronavirus. Uh, and he is incredibly wealthy and he's a Chinese businessman. 